We want to create breakthroughs that surprise our customers, whether they're internal or external, in a positive way. And then two, in order to create those breakthroughs, we've got to find a little bit of nugget of surprise in ourselves. And I'm going to share with you some examples and some stories about how anyone can start to find surprise and deliver surprise to those they serve. So what's a breakthrough to you? The internet. The internet itself, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Well, some of mine are pop rocks. I love pop rocks. Pop rocks, when I was a kid, these are the ones that are in the press. These are the ones we all know about. They're all products. I lived in a big company for five, six years at HP in the Silicon Valley. I know that breakthroughs are more than that. Breakthroughs are about how we can do business inside as well as what we provide outside. I live this at HP. I was running their strategy group. We believed that if you put all of the right tools, processes, methodologies into that corporate meat grinder, that out would come innovation. But we were missing that ingredient. Corporate America hates that. Uncertainty, ambiguity, the fog of the future. We want to avoid that at all costs. Book. And I did a search on business books with surprise in their titles. 100% of them, every single one, is about how to avoid, minimize, reduce, prevent surprises in business. Not surprising. <laughs> These little surprises that exist all around us, we oftentimes miss, even if they're right in front of us. Because you focused. I had you focus on something. You focused, and the rest of it went away. What are you doing in your jobs every day? Um, but I'm going to illustrate it through some examples, primarily examples of how other companies have dealt with finding surprises proactively and responding to surprises. And surprises don't always have to be good. They can be bad. So how do you deal with that? Listen. Now, this is very counterintuitive for most marketing people, because you're not listening to the customer, you're listening to our, ourselves. First, when I went out and I talked to all those leaders, everyone was saying, you know what, we had this sense that we needed to listen to ourselves about what we needed to do, because customers don't know what they want in the future. We have to lead them. Come a couple examples. Target, I talked to Robin Waters, who brought Target from $4 billion to $40 billion as head of design. No, no one told Target that they should partner with Philippe Stark and do cool design as a differentiator against Walmart and others. They led the market. They listened to themselves. We want to be known for design. Chuck Templeton is the founder of OpenTable. Anyone use OpenTable? Yeah, OpenTable's awesome. Love OpenTable. Chuck came, came to me when I was at HP. I went to high school with Chuck. And he said, Soren, I have this business plan for this company called Easy Eats. I said, sounds interesting. I'll take a look at it. I'll give you feedback. He said, do you want to do this with me? I'm like, no, no. I have this awesome job at HP. I'm not going to do Easy Eats. Oops. <laughs> All right. So today it's open table. So the last thing I'm going to mention is that a lot of these individuals who are really trying to change the game and what they're doing, they see this as a, a journey. It's not a one-time one shot deal. The journey is, is part of the destination. And it's a surprising destination, which makes it fun. Today's uncertain environment, our ambiguous environment, demands that we be flexible and open and adaptive as we move forward. If we say we have that one year plan and we are only sticking to it, and if we deviate at all, it's a failure, we're setting ourselves up for real challenges. So last uh, thing I want to do, and this, this requires a little bit of honesty on your part, because what I'm going to do is an innovation quiz that drills home some of these points. Hey, okay, last two minutes. There is a prize for the winner. There is a prize. So, and it's a really cool prize, too. So, so you want to win. So here's what I need you to do. I am going to jump down here, and I'm going to share with you some questions about companies who have innovated. And I want you to yell out the answer. Last question, YouTube. YouTube did not start out as an open video sharing site. It started out as kind of a specialty website. Do you know what it was? Da who said dating? What's your name? John. John said dating. 
That is true. I think John was the only one to use it as a dating site <laughs> because it didn't work. You're going to get the answer, which is the Pop Rocks Extreme case <laughs> for you, for your, the message of all of these. These big innovations often start out as something else. You don't know the answer when you start out. You have a sense that you want to do something big, and you go for it. You let the surprise roll in. You change your assumptions, challenge your assumptions, shift on a dime, and something good happens. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure.